Hey guys, welcome to uh, Impact and Fusion, our Sunday morning uh, Sunday school. And I just wanted to welcome you guys, but also um, just this is the time that we're going to be digging into God's Word and learning more about what it means to be a follower of Him. Uh, we are in the middle of this series called Fruit Ninja. We have uh, been going through and um, we've gone quite a, quite a ways in our uh, study of Fruit Ninja. And so just review, um, again, if you uh, have memorized this and you tell me or Marnie, um, we will give you a prize. Uh, even if I've given you a prize before, there's another prize. It's different, it's new, you'll, you'll like it. So, let's review. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And that's Genesis 5, 22 through 23. Remember, you gotta have, you got to have the reference, because if you ever need to find it, that you need to look in the Bible, and that's where you're going to find it. So, uh, here we are, uh, the last three of the fruit of the Spirit. And we've been talking about fruit ninja, what it means to be a fruit ninja. Um, I like that, that game, the swiping of the, of the, um, the fruit as it's on your, on your iPad or iPhone or um, iPod. It's a pretty fun game. Uh, I'm not very good at it, but it, it's a lot of fun. Uh, and so we've been talking about that and what it means to follow after Jesus. And after you follow after Jesus, these things, the fruit of the Spirit, will come out of you. And it will come out of you in a way that you probably never ever expected it would come out. Um, when you have hard times and it just you show patience to somebody. And then you are upset with somebody and you have patience with them or you have kindness to them even though they don't deserve it. This is the kind of stuff that when we fall after God, this is the stuff that comes out. Um, it comes out of, of our speech. It comes out of our actions. It comes out in our mannerisms. Um, even when we probably shouldn't even act this way, it comes out of us. Um, so today, faithfulness. Uh, I, uh, one of my, one of my favorite teams is the San Francisco Giants, and the San Francisco Giants, um, is a baseball team, if you didn't know, um, that's why this is a baseball cap, uh, but the San Francisco Giants, and, uh, they have been in the World Series a couple times in the last, uh, four years, and, which is a pretty cool experience, um, because I grew up not knowing them ever winning a World Series, and finally they did. Um, and then they won two years later, which is such an awesome thing because uh, we're in the right, right in the middle of the World Series right now. I'm, I've been thinking about that. And so I wanted to share with you about uh, this guy I knew. This guy I knew, um, oftentimes we would watch sporting events together, and he, uh, he always picked a team and he would root for them. And he would, he would talk trash about, about the other team and, and uh, all these different things about what he didn't like of the other team. Well, I, uh, he was, he, we were watching a game together, and, and he was watching uh, the baseball, and, and the Giants were uh, the team that he was rooting against. And he was talking all kinds of all stuff about them, about how bad they were, and they were never going to win, and all this stuff. And uh, his team was losing. And, and I just said, look at the scoreboard, buddy. Look at the scoreboard. And his team started making a comeback and started coming back, coming back, coming back, coming back. And then all of a sudden, it's the ninth inning, he decides to start rooting for the Giants. He changes his team that he was rooting for. And then we're just like, what in the world's going on? And so then we're like, well, what about all that stuff that you said? And, he, and then he starts talking trash about the team that he was originally rooting for. Because he knew so much about both teams, he could talk bad about both. And this is a great example of not being faithful. You see, God calls us to be faithful. And faithfulness um, is not just a faithful to a sports team, um, yeah, that, that's cool, but, but ultimately that's not the biggest thing we should be faithful to. The biggest thing we should be faithful to is, is to our relationship with God. 
Um, another thing would be great to be faithful to is, is your spouse. If, once you guys get married, be faithful to one person. Don't be faithful to everybody. If you're faithful to everybody, that one person is not going to be able to, you're not going to live up to the standard that you've made, the commitment you've made. Uh, uh, 1 Samuel 12, 24 says, Only fear the Lord and serve Him faithfully with all your heart, for consider that great things He has done for you. God has done so many awesome things for you, we are to be faithful to Him alone. So, the next thing um, that I want to talk to you guys about was just about um, the covenant with Noah. Noah, um, you know, he built the ark for years and years and years and years and years, and things went awesome. Um, he had raised, he had built this boat over however many years, and this was something that he was living his life committed to following after God. So for years he had built this, this ark. And so then the flood comes, he's floating on the ark, and he's just like, I'm so glad that I was so faithful to God through all this. Then, after everything happens, God makes a covenant with Noah. His covenant is called the rainbow. And oftentimes you, when it rains, you'll see the rainbow. And the rainbow was a covenant that God made with Noah. He said, I am going to live, uh, or I'm going to make a covenant with you and for the whole entire world that I will not flood the earth again. Genesis 9, uh, verse 8 says, Then God said to Noah and his sons, With you and with your descendants um, after you, and with every living creature that was with you, the birds, the livestock, and the wild animals, all those that came out of the ark with you, every living creature on earth, I establish my covenant with you, his promise, his loyalty, however you may want to say it, with you, never again will all life be cut off by the waters of a flood. Never again will there be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, this is the sign of the covenant I am making between me and you and every living creature with you, a covenant of all generations to come. I have set my rainbow in the clouds and it will be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. Whenever I bring clouds over the earth and the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will remember my covenant between me and you and all living creatures and every, of every kind. Never again will the flood waters um, destroy all life. Wherever the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and all the living creatures. Um, so God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant I have established between me and all of the earth. God was faithful. God is still faithful to that. Yeah, there might be tsunamis and there might be flooding and there might be... Um, different ways the water rises all over the place but ultimately he's not going to cut off the whole entire earth by flood waters God has still been faithful to that and so when we see the rainbow in the sky it just shows God's faithfulness to us it shows God's faithfulness um, to every living creature so as we go to small groups I want you to think about the covenant that God made with his creatures I want you to think about how faithful he was to us and how we are to be faithful to him and him only. Like we read in 1 Samuel 12, 24. So, let me pray. Father God, thank you so much for your faithfulness. Thank you so much for all the things you've given to me. Thank you so much for all the things you've given to this earth. Lord, I pray that as, as we continue to read in your scriptures about how you were faithful and how um, we are to be faithful to you. I pray that we would hear these things and we would say, I, I only want to be faithful to you. And then here on earth, Lord, we hopefully we will get a chance that we will be faithful to our spouses only. So Lord, I pray that you would 
um, be in this time. Help us to be open and honest with um, the people in our small groups. Thank you so much for all you've done. We love you. Pray